Jim here, Whiskey Philosopher, and today I'm going to share with you my thoughts about that new documentary on Netflix, Seaspiracy. I basically got four points that I want to boil this down to. First, actually, is that I've heard from a lot of sources that some of the factual material in this is disputed as to its accuracy. I can't really say. I think statistics are kind of tough, right? Everybody has their own statistics, so I, I, I can't really speak to that. There are some basic ideas in this video that really did make me think, and I resonated with the points. The first one is about uh, the point regarding a domesticated food source versus a wild food source. Personally, I've always thought that a wild food source is kind of fraught with peril, fraught with, uh, with some risk, and, and here's why. A domesticated food source, let's say cows. I know how many cows I have. I know how many cows my whole country has. I can know how many die, of what causes, and you know, how many we eat, how many are born, what the levels are of this food source. I really know how sustainable this food source is by direct observation. I can also compare that to other countries. What are other countries doing well? Were they not doing well? I could trade my cows with them. Uh, cows just don't disappear generally. However, a wild food source is exactly the opposite, especially one that lives in the ocean. A land-based food source, let's say deer, uh, I can have a better idea, right? I can put cameras out there, sensors, use helicopters, uh, feeding stations, uh, that sort of thing. However, a wild food source in the ocean is really unaccountable. Uh, first of all, I can't see them. I can't see them directly. I can only, often only see evidence or very small samples of the population through cameras or catches or that sort of thing. The other thing is, these food sources move, they migrate from country to country. So if I have some practices in my country about how to catch this source or how many or what methods I'm going to use, how many I'm going to throw back, what scientific data I'm going to collect, other countries might be doing totally different practices that could totally negate mine. So if I'm really being very uh, cautious about how many I catch, I put limits on it, other countries might be grabbing all they can, right? Then there's also the idea of theft, right? Um, very often, you know, different countries are gonna come intrude on waters. Uh, it, it's just really difficult, I feel, to be sustainable about a wild population, especially for a pressured species. Uh, then there's also the idea of uh, illegal, just illegally catching these things. Let's say, for example, tuna. You have, let's say in the future, some kinds of tuna become prohibited or protected and other kinds are catchable. Very often with other species, people will mix that. They'll catch some of the illegal species and who can know, right? You can only know by DNA testing once it makes it to market. So really, really hard. So for me, there's a major issue that this uh, video rightly brings up. It's, this is kind of my spin on it. Domestic food source versus a wild food source. Really, really difficult to, to manage, I feel, a wild food source effectively and equitably between all countries that use that food source. Point two is uh, brought up actually by the Faroe Island whaler. I really, really like that part of the video. Um, it, it was a brutal part uh, that, that, I mean, whaling by, basically by hand is a pretty brutal uh, village activity and uh, you know, I don't recommend viewing that for everybody. However, in the interview with this guy after the whaling event, he really brought something up. He was bringing up something I very greatly believe in. Uh, he was debating the value of a life. He was saying, you know, is it better, you know, of course these whales are large animals, I forget what kind they are, maybe they were pilot whales, I don't recall. But he was saying that, okay, let's say that that whale, uh, killing one of those whales, is worth like 2,000 2, chickens worth of meat by weight. He said, so what's better, me killing, taking the life of one whale or taking the life of 2,000 chickens? How would you weigh those two morally? Or is the life of a whale a life of a cow a life of a sheep, a life of a chicken, a life of a fish, a salmon. Uh, are you saying that, that some of those lives are more valuable than another? Now I know that, that for me, this is a really, really salient topic because, um, you know, personally speaking, I know that a lot of people uh, think that certain animals are much cuter 
and maybe even more sentient than other animals. And therefore, they would lean toward thinking that one of these lives is more valuable than another. For me personally, that is a very debatable topic and I'm not gonna put put a judgment on it at, at this moment, but I just wanna say that for me, it's a very, very uh, difficult and complicated topic to uh, debate. And I think the whaler really brought up a good point there. He was protecting his own interests, of course. However, I think it's salient. And along with that point, what, what the man says uh, very smartly, he says, yeah, you know what? He feels that if you're a vegetarian, that is a consistent viewpoint. I understand and I get your point. However, if you're a person out there who eats any meat, he was saying he feels it's very difficult for you to criticize eating whales versus cows versus chickens versus salmon versus tuna. And I think that's really a point that, that deserves some, some consideration and debate. Your mileage may vary. Next, the, the spirituality of taking lives at all and what that means. Kill, basically killing for a living to use the Animal Planet uh, documentary. Well, it's not a documentary, it's a series, right? The Animal Planet series, killing for a living lions and tigers and that sort of thing. So I've often thought, you know, as a, well, I studied, I was biology and chemistry and thinking, you know, looking back in time, millions or billions of years ago, you had the first creatures, the first proto-creatures. They were, you know, cell or before protocellular masses they were they were getting their own energy from the environment or from this from the sun from chemicals in the, in the soup and these were creatures that that were creating their own energy or their own substances or getting them directly from the environment they weren't killing anything yet and then there were the first robbers the first predators that that were taking advantage of these uh, photosynthetic or autosynthetic creatures and I think that, for me, is a very interesting moment in history because uh, maybe kind of like the Garden of Eden story where a lot of people believe in the symbolism of, of the Bible that maybe that was where death or predation came into the Garden of Eden. And I think that, that uh, on Earth, in existence, once there were like the first predators and prey, um, that's kind of a dark moment because once, once your existence depends on taking the lives of another creature, depending on your spirituality or your religion, um, I think all of them would have uh, moral consequences. Um, I think that's pretty heavy. And I think there, with a lot of people, there is, uh, even with meat eaters, there's a little bit of a regret about the need to take another life to sustain yourself. So I think that is something that I think about and um, this video made me think about. Last, I do know that this movie was made by a vegan and a kind of active vegan. Vegans carry a certain baggage with them. And in fact, there's a, uh, a, a joke that I've heard. You know, if you have a room full of people, how do you know which one or ones is the vegan? How would you find that out? And the punchline to that, that joke is, well, actually, you don't have to expend any energy to find that out. If you wait just a little while, the vegans will tell everybody that they're a vegan and why. So, and I do, I do find that in, in my life. So, um, I know that this, uh, this video is a piece of activism and, and I've learned that even more since I watched it and I've watched some like, uh, debunking videos about this. Um, and that definitely this was made by a vegan. So it has a purpose, right? To steer people away from eating meat. So there was only one conclusion that this uh, video was written with. And, and I, I take that point. Uh, having said that, there could also be some valid points in a video or a piece of writing that's made with that end in mind, if there's some valid points in there. And I think we could debate um, the, uh, the accuracy of the information in there. However, I do know it was written by vegans and a lot, a lot of people, I had a lot of feedback from my other video about this. So yeah, I do understand that and the complication there. And this kind of relates to my very, very last point, which is point five, which is after I saw this video, I looked on Netflix and I see there's another video, Cowspiracy, which apparently is off. It might also be written by the same person or the same group or related to this person. And then I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So, you know, I really do believe that probably we should take some of the pressure off the ocean fisheries. Personally, I do believe that.
I don't think everybody should stop eating fish full stop. I think that would be unsustainable at this moment in time. However, you know, I was thinking if you go along with the idea, okay, stop or reduce your fish, and then you see cowspiracy, it's like, my gosh, what am I gonna eat? Then I realized, of course, that falls in line with the vegan philosophy in that people of that philosophy are hoping that we would come to the conclusion that you would only eat vegetables, and that's fair enough. Uh, I'm not there yet. I have been, I don't know if I've been vegan at parts of my life. I, I know that that, that carries, you know, no leather and oils and animal products, all, all that stuff. So I've never been there. I have been vegetarian at certain points of my life. And I do think, well, anyway, and I think that has merit. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I didn't know Cowspiracy was out there and I was kind of shocked thinking, um, I'm not gonna watch that because I like my steaks. All right, okay, anyway. I hope that gave you some food for thought. It definitely this movie gave me some food for thought and some of the comments I received from the other video for my other channel that I made were also very provoking for me. Maybe those points will be interesting for you to mull around, maybe not. Anyway, thanks for joining in. I'll see you on down the road.